Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokis Mystery. This will be part 301. We're continuing with a lesson titled, Beginning of Sorrows Continued. This will be part 2. We're looking at the situation, the conditions that will constitute the change that's going to take place at the beginning of sorrows. We're looking at things that are taking place tonight uh, as we read, looking at things that are going to take place not on earth but in the heavens at the beginning of sorrows. Scripture indicates the judgment of the beginning of sorrows will not only affect those of earth, but also the corrupt Luciferians in the heavens. Their abodes will begin to experience great shakings. The beginning of sorrows commences with certain activities. One of the main activities is described as great shakings, great upheavals. Turn to Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verse 26. <clears throat> Whose voice then shook the earth? But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. One of the tremendous preeminent activities that men are going to experience are great shakings. First starting in the heavens and then continuing on the earth. Turn to Luke, 21st chapter, verse 11. And great earthquakes. Now the word earthquake there in the Greek is mega seismos. It means mighty shaking. Great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. Now people look at this and they're thinking he's saying great earthquakes in different parts of the earth. He's not saying that. He's saying great shakings in different parts of the creation. You're going to have shakings on the earth. You're going to have shakings in the atmosphere. You're going to have shakings in space. You're going to have shakings in the invisible heavens. We just read it in Hebrews. I shake not the earth only, but the heavens. And famines and pestilence and fearful sights. And great signs shall there be from heaven. Now, <clears throat> what is the extent of this? Scripture teaches <clears throat> there's going to be unlimited shaking in that respect. Turn back to Hebrews, the 12th chapter. We're going to read verse 27. It starts at the beginning of sorrows. It continues throughout the tribulation period. It 
Hebrews 11, verse 27. Excuse me, Hebrews 12, verse 27. Hebrews 12, verse 27. I have 11 at the top and 12 at the bottom. And this word, yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. What is he saying here? He's saying that the heavens are going to be shaken in increasing intensity, that there will be nothing left that cannot be shaken out of them. Everything that's evil is going to be shaken out of the heavens down to the earth. Yes. So literally, not everything, everything evil is shaken out of the heavens. Yes. Mm -hmm. Does the shaken expand out to the farthest reaches of the second creation? Everything. Every single thing. Everything. Nothing will be unaffected. Whether it's in the heavens or on the earth, ultimately is going to experience a great shaking. You ever see some a parent take a little kid and shake them? Yes. <laughs> oh, you've experienced. I've experienced that. Yes. Yes. We're going to start to see that the beginning of sorrows. When the judgment is pronounced, the shaking will then begin. And it's going to reach a point at which everything will seem to be going into a state of convulsions in the creation. Turn back to Luke, the 21st chapter. Verse 25 to 26. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, Upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Why is this perplexity taking place? Because of the shaking in the heavens. It will seem to the, the human race that the earth is going to end. Because they've never experienced anything like this before. The shaking is going to increase in intensity. Yes. So, it's obvious what's being said is the heavens and the earth are being shaken simultaneously. Yes. Yes. Where the, there is nothing stable. There, it's all Everything jumbled. is going into convulsions. Right. <clears throat> Verse 26. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. They're going, they're going to experience something that the mind, the human mind of man, is not prepared for. Things being shaken out of the heavens and brought down to the earth in the presence of men, causing such fright in men that they drop dead. Mm -hmm. Of fear. It says the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. What does that mean? The word powers is referring to magistrates, rulers, principalities. Turn to Ephesians. Second chapter.
verse, uh, verse 2. Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. The word course of this world means the design of the world's system. The whole human race is programmed to walk after the programming of the world's system, which is a manipulation. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. The human race is manipulated into its lifestyle, its belief, by the power that resides in the air, in the atmosphere, in the spiritual part of the atmosphere. It affects the spiritual part of man's makeup to cause man to err, to cause man to live contrary to God. Man is programmed to live contrary to God, God's will and God's way by this programming. Yes? You should understand in that the spirit influence comes through breathing in the air, which we've read about and we've understood, but mm -hmm. also through, I'm going to use the term, waves of influence projected to us by the Luciferians. Apart from the breathing and the waves I've just described, are there any other methods in which the influence is received by humanity? Sure, thought. Okay. Thought is energy on a spiritual level. The effects, the inner workings of man's makeup. Is there anything else? Well, sin, of course. Well, that's what the result is. Yes. Turn to Ephesians 6 chapter. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 What else can be done? You put on the full armor of God. Right, but that doesn't tell us the various ways of it coming in, but I understand what you mean. Where are we going, Josie? Uh, Ephesians 6 chapter. Starting in verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, heavenly places. You have thrones, dominions, principalities that are manipulating through the element of air in the spiritual realm the human race. The human race is kept in a box manipulated by these beings on the outside that man can't detect but they sure are controlled by them. <clears throat> when the beginning of sorrows takes place the regions from which these principalities are residing are going to be shaken, go into convulsions. These beings are going to be shaken out of their habitations, shaken down to the earth. <clears throat> Turn to Psalms 82. We're going to read verses 1 to 7, Psalms 82. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. 
How long will you judge unjustly, accept the persons of the wicked? Sila. Defend the poor and fatherless, do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy, rid them out of the hand of the wicked. He's talking to the individuals we just read about in Ephesians, the sixth chapter. The prince, the principalities that are at war against the human race. How? Through the manipulation of the element of darkness, which is within the atmosphere in which man is involved and surrounded. It's a control element, it's a manipulation element that's taken man to a point of captivity and helplessness. YHVH is <coughs> criticizing them, warning them they had better change because there's going to come a time of judgment. Drop down to verse 6. I have said your gods, and all of you are children of the Most High, but ye shall die as men and fall like one of the princes. Die as men die. Now what does that mean? They're going to be drained of their power, incapacitated, just like humans when they die, the body becomes inert, incapacitated, no power whatsoever. It is dead. The spirit goes off to either heaven or the torment regions of hell. Yes. Is it the spirit separates from the soul? No, the spirit is within the soul. Spirit okay. dies. Okay, so the body and the spirit separate. Yes. The body separates the spirit within the soul as a unit separates. If it's saved, the spirit is alive. It's still light. If it dies, the spirit has died before even the person dies. And it just goes into the torment regions as darkness. It talks about God putting out the candle of the wicked. So what happens to the spirit when it leaves? Where does it go? Back to God? The spirit dies. Oh, so it doesn't it dies. Go. It, dis it extinguishes. It doesn't go anywhere. It's a light that God put within the soul to control through the the, the 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 individual the ability of the soul to operate. So is is, is it annihilated? Ceases to exist? Yes. Yes. Okay, so no memory, no no uh... That's the spirit. Not talking about the soul. The soul can be pictured as a, as a radio. Spirit is the dial that takes you to the channels of the radio. The dial becomes this uh, inoperative. No longer functioning. So, in that particular capacity, the soul has died. There's no life whatsoever in it. So it goes into the torment regions. Yes. You previously told us that the spirit, having been disconnected from the soul, goes back to the Father. Of the righteous. Okay, only the righteous. Of the righteous right. goes to heaven. But those who are obviously not righteous, it just... It extinguishes. It, just, it doesn't function anymore. Okay. There's no need for it. Uh, it, it doesn't go anywhere, do anything. It just is rendered inoperable within that soul. Everything in that is dead. Soul is dead. The spirit is dead. The person is dead. Mm. It goes out of memory into a region in which uh, life no longer exists. That's the same region where we expect to find everything which is unrighteous at eternity. Right. So when we enter into eternity, Everything that was unrighteous is in a little ball somewhere in a far corner of the creation. That's how I'm picturing it. Uh, everything that is unrighteous goes to the darkness region. Right, but that's in a far corner of the creation. Yeah. Because yes. by that stage, everything yes, is very it's, it's a little molecule mm -hmm. right. within the vast expanse sure. of righteousness. Yes. Okay, but it ceases to exist, so it can't even be a molecule. It's outside of life. You, you can't compare it to anything. Just like it's like the soul, it's dead. You can can't compare the soul to anything. It's in a stage of forgetfulness. So is it eternally that way? Yes. Yes. Is it observable? Sure. Sure. But it ceases to exist. Yes. Okay. Existence is defined by God. He says the dead he forgets. They still exist. They're going to go up to a corner uh, on on the new earth and go look out at these people. Right. 
But as far as God is concerned, they don't exist. Because he's removed his Because they're outside of light. Right. Uh, outside life. of life. Right. Okay. <clears throat> and the spirit in them is still there. But it ceases to exist. It's darkness. Before in life it was light. It was a candle that illuminated the things of the soul. A genius is an individual that can direct his spirit into a talent. Einstein, uh, uh, the, the great sculptors, Michelangelo, and all these guys could do all this stuff. It's because they were able to channel their spirit into the talent that was in the soul and bring it forth and manifest something through it. At the fall, man lost control of his spirit. So the experiences of the tormented soul, the unrighteous used to be person, mm -hmm. is still eternal. Yes. But you're not calling that eternality existence. No. You're, what are you calling that? You're calling it a, uh, a stage of death. I'm not talking about existence as in existence in life. It's still an exist. They're existing. They they exist. They exist, but not from God's perspective. Okay. They're in darkness. Yes. God defines what existence is, and existence for God is concerned is life. Life is His presence. Yes. If He is not present, then there is no life, there is and no that's life. how we should. Okay. Yes. So okay. you look. That's how God looks at it. Uh, death is the absence of life. Mm. God forgets them, because life separates from darkness, which is death. So in separating, there is never again any connection. Okay. And in that respect, the individual, the only thing you could say when you call it existence, the way that existence is defined is consciousness. That's all it has, is awareness. So should we understand that the old man, which is the original Adamic spirit, Genesis 1, 27, or 26, 27, so, <coughs> Soul. That's the soul. That's not a spirit. It's a soul. Okay, okay. That clarifies a few things. So, that's the soul. Mm -hmm. The soul was not designed to go into the heavens. No. Which is why it needs the new man yes. at the born again experience yes. to take it into the heavens. Yes. So, therefore, there is the old man. I was thinking that the old man was a spirit connected to a soul. No, the old man is the soul in which the spirit operates. Okay. Well, where does the spirit come from? Before the born again experience, where does the spirit you're referring to come from? God. Okay, that's the old man. Yeah. So we're talking about two things connected. A the spirit, spirit has always been part of the soul. Okay. All right. God made it that way so okay. the soul could function. I picture that as next door to the soul. Right. <laughs> no, okay. it's within. It's called the heart. In that respect, when you're born, your soul, your spirit, become uh, adapted to the physical, yeah. <clears throat> which is a breathing apparatus in the flesh <clears throat> that connects you through um, the um, bowl and the cords and right. all the rest of that. And the system, yes. Yes. <clears throat> but um, when that separates, then the soul and the spirit are still a unit. Okay. The body goes back to the dust. Mm -hmm. The soul, if it's saved, the spirit goes to the place of righteous okay. spirits. Okay. So, <clears throat> since the spirit goes to the place of righteous spirits, there's no trash can, <clears throat> I'm just using that word, so I don't know what other word to use, mm -hmm. that the Lord would receive the old spirit in, because the new spirit is the one that brought you to to the heavens. Mm -hmm. The old spirit, as one understanding, still exists. Where does that old spirit go if you're righteous? It, with God. What does he do with it? In the presence of God. It doesn't say. It remains there. It's, it's like a collective. Just part of Collection him. of spirits. Okay. You read about that in Hebrews. All right. Hebrews 1. I'll tell you in a minute. But it's right. a question. Okay. What's your question? Jonesy, if, if you know God wants you to do something and you choose not to do it, what, what can we expect? Well, you can expect curses and then judgment. Okay. Because that cons constitutes disobedience. disobedience to God. Which brings right? about curses and judgment. Since we've seen pastors behave, not just pastors, other persons, but let's focus on pastors for a second. Pastors behave in that manner. The disobedience 
turns into rebellion because you know, it's no longer just disobedience. In my mind, disobedience has a certain level. When you go further than that, Satan might be a good example, he's beyond the disobedient part. He refuses to even consider obedience and has gone into the rebellion. At that point, at that stage, that's an insult to the Lord, isn't it? Disobedience is rebellion. Okay. It says obedience is better than sacrifice. Disobedience, the decision not to do, is an act of rebellion. Is that an insult to the Lord? Sure. Does the Lord continue to hear our prayers? Well, excuse me. Does the Lord continue to act upon our prayers? Of a disobedient person? Yeah. No. No. Not at all. Okay. <clears throat> That's why when Saul did what he did, the prophet Samuel came to him and said, What are you doing? Saul said, Well, I'm offering a sacrifice because you didn't show up and I needed God's blessing. Samuel said, You don't know what you're doing. You just, you just wiped yourself out. You lost the kingdom when you did that. Right. Yes. The reward for disobedience is judgment. Unless, unless the person repents before they die. He asks for forgiveness. That alters everything. And I'm quite sure the Lord probably, before he left this, this life, reminded him that, you know, things needed to be straightened out. Whether they were or not, who knows? No, nobody knows. But he he had a rebellious uh, <coughs> character characteristic within him all the time. He would dig in his heels. He would not recognize things that he knew needed to be acquiesced to. That was his decision. So what we find here, these principalities are going to be shaken out of their habitations down to the earth. And when it happens, we just read in Luke 21st chapter, it's going to scare humanity to death. Because when they come down, the power is going to be gone. I mean, it's like, they're going to be like globs of jello hitting the ground. But by virtue of the fact that they exist and the regions that they're coming out of exist and people are going to see the reality of that for the first time and the mind of man is not going to be able to deal with it. So not only are they going to um, die, everybody, well, I'll say the majority of the people around where they're going to fall aren't going to make it because they won't be able to handle it. Great shaking. Why is it that men are going to have heart attacks in the first place? Because they weren't prepared for the things that are going to happen. You couldn't tell them. They weren't, didn't have an ear to hear. They had better things to do. <laughs> so when it happened, they weren't able to deal with it. They knew already. They knew all there was to know. Yeah. Richard. Now turn to Hebrews, the 12th chapter, I'm going to address your question. Verse 22, Hebrews 12, 22 and 23. But you come unto Mount Sion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, Prototokos, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. So your spirit is at the throne of God. The last thing Jesus said was, 
Into thy hand I commit my spirit. Spirit of just men made me. Now why is it that the spirit leaves the righteous at death? It doesn't continue. Because at death, <coughs> you experience the fullness of the Holy Spirit. You don't need the Adamic spirit or even the regenerate spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is going to replace it to the fullness. And the Holy Spirit will be the guiding influence of uh, the heavens to the individual. Since the Father is life and all things are Him, because all things come from Him, therefore they must be Him. Mm -hmm. This, I'm going back to the unrighteous person who goes into torment regions and their spirit within their soul disintegrates. Why would the Father allow that spirit, which is part of His soul, as we've understood from you, disintegrate? It's not part of the soul, it's a light that the Father puts within the soul at the time of the creation. It's a component of the soul. When uh, God created man, let us make man in our image, mm -hmm. he spoke man into being, the spirit aspect of it was the central focus in which the soul would be able to access its talents. That's what the Greeks call the spark, the spark of man. Mm -hmm. But the question is, since the person dies unrighteously, goes to the torment regions, mm -hmm. we understand that his soul does and is and experiences and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But I understood you to mean that the spark or the spirit, excuse me, that's in his soul, is part of his soul, mm -hmm. that, that unit, mm -hmm. dissolves, leaving just the soul. No, it, it goes dark. The spirit part goes the dark. The part of the spirit, the spirit itself, is a light. It's like a candle. Okay. It goes out. Because his presence has been removed. Okay. Yes. Why doesn't it go back to him then? Since it's it's him. It's corrupted. Okay. Uh, he's not going to take anything yes, from a corrupted individual of course, of course. into his presence. A rookie uh, mistake, I mean. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> uh, what we find sometimes God will extinguish his spirit before the person dies, mm. and they just go into the soul with the darkened spirit, uh, going to eternity in the darkened spirit. Yes. So I was thinking maybe he could put some antiseptic on it and clean up the spirit instead of annihilate it. But uh, no, he doesn't do that. No, no, mm -mm. no. <clears throat> a righteous person is in the presence of his spirit. Mm. Uh, just as Jesus set the example. And in that respect, Jesus knew when he died, uh, being the firstborn prototokos, he wouldn't need the spirit. He'd be gone beyond a spiritual function. The Holy Spirit now becomes the totality of his being. And when you find the prototokos, it's the same thing. They are uh, connected totally to the Holy Spirit. Yeah, because of the expansion. Yes. So, to the degree that a person who has experienced that point still recognizes that they have a spirit, and I want to use the word separate, but I know it's wrong, which is in addition to the Holy Spirit, is there anything which intimates that it still works? Or as far as they're concerned, they're purely Holy Spirit and there's nothing else to it? Purely Holy Spirit. Turn to Romans 8, 16. Does the Holy Spirit, as the returning, take over the individuality, the identity of the person? Does he take over? Or yes, does he take over? Does he does he animate, use, merges with? Mm. It's the Holy Spirit that gives the saint life in the first place. It's okay. a new creation. Okay. So he's created. He's created a an intelligence that he now cohabits with. Which is why every person who has that experience looks like Jesus Christ. Yes. Romans 8 verse 16. Okay. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. Okay. 
that we are the children of God. So the Holy Spirit is not communing with your mind. It's not communing with your uh, uh, thoughts. Or anyway, he's communicating with the spirit that's in your heart that's been regenerated. Person in sin, the spirit is corrupted, just like the rest of them. Since the Holy Spirit is now you at the point of the merging, the adoption, how does the identity of the you manifest? Because everybody is Holy Spirit at that point. Plurality. You never lose your identity. Okay. You are who you are. It's just that, like with the Father, you're going to connect in a relationship that's inseparable but you still keep your identity but the Holy Spirit is what you operate in so when you speak you're not speaking uh, anywhere outside of the Holy Spirit mm. that's why when the Prototokos tells John come on up here and John says in the Spirit took me up okay. he's speaking as God the Holy Spirit okay. how is the Holy Spirit involved with the creation of our counterparts. That's the Father. Holy Spirit didn't have anything to do with it. Mm. Never mentioned in Romans 8 or Ephesians. It's a, so it's a total sovereign act of God, the Father. He wills it. Yes. Yeah. Should we understand that the way that you look, your profile, your features, your eyes, so on and so forth, are, I'm going to use the word, a, a physical replication of your heavenly counterpart. If we went to the heavens, we would see you. You would look like you is what I'm trying to get to. Is that true? Not necessarily. Okay. That's to say that Jesus' counterpart looked like he did on earth. No. Because Jesus on earth was, was, was a summation of his mother and his father's appearance and attributes, just like you. But Jesus like is you. God. But Jesus is a God. When he was God, the earthly aspect of Jesus didn't exist. Okay. Just like when you were called, and you were called to the throne as a son, the you that I see here, the you that I see here didn't exist. Right. They came in existence when your father and your mother got okay. together. Okay. Yes. All right. Here's a confusing one, Mr. Jones. Our counterpart. was created no no okay so he uh, hmm? explain that explain that so i get to the other part of my question mr jones creation is defined as something that has a beginning and an ending or a beginning and an eternity the sun the prototokos was not created he couldn't be created because he has to have no beginning no end okay we have a counterpart how did it come to be it was willed into being by willed, the Father. The Father willed it into being. Mm. So he didn't speak it into existence. He willed, he willed it. it. But you could say that the willing is onto the third... I've got to be careful how I say this because I know you won't be happy. The, <laughs> the third form or third methodology of creation. The Father speaks. He can, uh, no. uh, uh, so the Son constructs. And the Father wills. No, because you're looking at it as a an ongoing attribute of the Father. This is a one-time okay. event. Okay. He's not going to will anything else into being. No. Because he wants sons. Yeah. So our counterpart, is it more light than anything? It's all light. Okay. So he doesn't look identical to us. No. Since he is not he looks God. like the Father. Yeah. Since, okay. he, since he is not God, if we were able to look at his counterpart you know, with the eyes that we have, would we see him? You would know it at its end. Okay, that's interesting. So the eyes are not going to give us any understanding at all. Yeah, sight is a sensation. Because he's a spirit or because he... What's the because reason? Because of the Holy Spirit. It's omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. You'll be able to pick out everything because you will know as you are known. Is the fact that he's an Ephraim added to that equation? No. Okay. Because he could be in the heaven of heavens. And still thing. look the same. Sure. So my counterparts in Aperanios? Sure. At this time. Around the throne. Because the throne is in Aperanios right. and you're around the throne. So. But he might come down and you know, take care of some business. Because yes. that's how it looks to me. 
I might have already done it. I probably believe you did. Case in point, you, if you want to know what you look like, you're in, you look at Revelation, the first chapter. You're going to look like Jesus looked. Amen. You're going to have hair white uh, uh, as snow. You're going to have a white robe with a robe, a sash around the middle. So I'm going to have hair? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Me, me and Marty? Yes. Okay. And, and, and leave me out. And me. Yes. Oh. So addressing um, a discussion I had with Georgia just uh, yesterday, I think it was, the Revelation 22 incident. John knows that it's an angel. We know that he knows it's an angel because he uses the word angel in that verse. Mm -hmm. But he falls down thinking he has encountered Elohim. Mm -hmm. When he looks at Elohim in that state, because he's in, in, the, in the spirit at that point in time, he's seeing what Elohim actually looks like. He's mm -hmm. not seeing what Jesus Christ looked like. He when had, he's on the earth. No, not at all. Okay. No, so therefore the dynamis, the glory, is the thing that he's experiencing which causes him to say, oh my God, that's the Lord. Sure. Right. Sure. Okay. Remember, it's a family. Everybody looks the same. Now, when you say everyone looks the same, I'm understanding that to mean everybody is perceived as the same. It's like you're looking at a family. You look at the um, the Johnson family. Mm -hmm. They have similar characteristics. Sometimes if you have twins, mm -hmm. they look the same. That's but yet there's distinctions. Yes. Same way it's going to be in heaven. Everybody's going to look the same, but you're going to di be distinguished. You will know you, you will know him. A case in point, um, yes, John called him an angel, mm. but John knew he was beyond angelic experience right. okay. That's interesting. because of the glory. Gotcha. But wouldn't that indicate that John had its, well, I guess he did. I was about to say, wouldn't that indicate that John had experienced the glory of a creative angel and was able to compare the two? And sure. Of the answer is yes. Oh, yes, definitely. Okay, let's go on. Thank you, Brother Richard. Mm -hmm. Now, we're talking about the time in which the heavens are going to be shaken. We're talking about the fact that the heavens ultimately are going to be divested of all evil. We're looking at the fact that there is a multiplicity of things that are going to happen dealing with great upheavals. Scripture indicates massive conflicts will arise between the armies of God and Lucifer over dominion of the heavens. Michael the Archangel will head God's army. Daniel 12 verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time, to that same time. And at that time thy people will be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. So he's talking about events leading to what's called the Great Tribulation. There are going to be wars, conflicts, a tremendous um, upheavals in the heavens, each one becoming more increasingly um, powerful than the one before it, until it reaches a crescendo that affects all the secondary creation. We're given some examples of uh, conflicts that are going to take place. Turn to Revelation 12 chapter.
verse 4. And he sailed through the third part of the stars of heaven, and he cast them to the earth. The dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So here you have a tremendous battle in the heavens in which the armies of God lose. <clears throat> but it's just a battle, it's not the war. Drop down to verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon had fought and his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. It's the same group that took down the star group. They themselves get taken down by Michael's group. So it's tremendous upheavals and conflicts. All this is going to be seen from the earth. Should we understand that upon the their place not being found anymore in heaven, mm -hmm. that there is some form of cleansing that happens as a follow-up to the war which Michael stands up to. Yes. And is that an automatic thing? Does the Lord say, okay, now you finish, now I'm going to cleanse it? How does that operate? No, it comes with the kicking out of the, uh, the dragon. Okay. His influence is, is no longer there, he's no longer there, because you'll note that it goes on immediately to say, rejoice, the heavens Right. You that dwell in them, the thing has been liberated. Okay. Uh, all this, the, the, the corruption and everything comes down to the environs of earth. Everything is going to be brought down to earth. Earth is going to be the trash can mm -hmm. that collects all of this corruption. And it doesn't behoove anybody to be around when this takes place. Sure. Now the scripture teaches, as the heavens are liberated, the Father will receive praise. Turn to Psalms 89, verses 5 to 7. The heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord. Thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. It's talking about the heavens praise the Father for liberating the heavens around the throne. The sons are also praising him. For who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty here's talking about the prototokias, can be likened unto the Lord. God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints in the heavens, and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. So it's talking about heavens are going to be ringing <coughs> with the praises of the sons of God. When the beast claims he's the greatest, this, that, and the other, and the humans say, who can make war with him, he's the greatest, blah, 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 blah. They give him great delusion. Do they continue to believe that that's true? Or do they ever, at any point, recognize, hang on a second, this is complete nonsense. Look, look, look who's up there. No. No. So they'll never, they'll never know the truth, in other words? No. They'll go to their death thinking. They're forever sealed, believing a lie. It, okay. Because they stand there, watch him shake his fist at God, and they applaud believing that he's the answer to uh, what they need. Mm -hmm. Believing that God, those in heaven, those around the throne, are usurpers, are uh, jealous of this guy, and want to take over, they want to take over the church. <laughs> oh, excuse me, they want to take over the earth. Yes. 
yes, yes. You misspoke, yes, yes. <laughs> oh my word. Now, uh, <clears throat> scripture indicates the great shakings will open windows and doors through which things indescribable will pass to torment the, the men of earth. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 24, verses 17 to 18. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon the inhabitant of the earth. So talking about torment coming down on the human race. And then it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear or the sound of the fear shall fall into the pit. He that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare for the windows from on high are open. And the foundations of the earth do shake. So this is all due to the shaking. It's going to shake open windows and doors. Things are going to come through from the heavens, up from the subterranean regions. And the middle of it all is going to be humans. So as the person is running, fleeing from the noise, do you understand that the hell expands and just comes up and appears where that person is, is, is actually running. So they're running in hell. Or running into hell. Into hell, yes. Yeah. Not knowing, because they, can't, they have no, no, no sense of direction. Their mind isn't prepared for this. Mm. They're just trying to get out of what they see as an, an immediate threat. When it says fear, <clears throat> fear is a noun or a verb. Okay. A word of action, oh, he was greatly afraid. Mm. Or it's a noun. You, 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 you just have a fear in you. Mm. This isn't talking about that. This is talking about a being. Mm. It is a characteristic that to look upon it, would, 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 your, your blood would run cold. Boy. And the, the next thing you do, you would run from it, which is what these people are doing. Yes. It's a being. Yes. It's an intelligence that is not... The, the writer here is not capable of describing what it is mm. in human terms. All he can describe is its characteristic and what it uh, manifests upon contact. And people see it, it's like uh, you're, you're looking at the stuff now, the, the cryptoids that are coming in, right. running here, running there. Right. Uh, people are scared to death. Well, this is the nth degree of that. And these things are coming out of the woodwork because the windows and doors that confine them are being shaken loose. Is fear uh, a principality in the order of hell and death? Yes. Okay. There is a spirit of fear. Right. Uh, but the being is a principality. It's yeah. yes, yes. And uh, what you're what you're going to have here are things that hitherto have no ability to be described because they don't fall under the aegis of um, normal uh, sentient uh, beings of the creation that are familiar to men. That's like when you look at the programs like uh, Mr. MBB 333, mm -hmm. stuff is coming out of the heavens now. The people, the, everybody has the same thing. What is that? Right. Black cubes, yeah. lights tumbling upon itself. Yeah, you have a question? Oh, okay. But you can you can hear the fear in their in their voices. I've, sure. I've seen some of those. Sure, because they, they, they're trying to define what this thing is, and they don't have any definition for it. They, there's no way they can reconcile it in their thinking from a human perspective. And that alone brings on fear. Mm. And it's just going to continue from there. So what we're looking at is a preparation now for things that are coming on the earth. You've heard about all the sounds and the horns and the trumpets that yep. they're hearing from heaven. Well, I believe that has to do with a preliminary and it has to do with upheavals that are taking place in the heavens.
Mm. And uh, as a result, you're having a resonance that uh, is being um, taking an effect on the earth. A sound that's undefined, but it's something, there's a source to it, but the source is beyond detection at this point. It seems that those who live in rural areas are more consternated by these sounds because this is new sleepy sheep herding that kind of concept <laughs> what, what is this and I, I suspect that there's greater fear there because they have no comparison no experience mm -hmm. compared to those who live in cities who generally speaking expect madness anyway yeah but even they are uh, they're trying to figure out you know they got no place to put this because uh, normally it would be maybe a ship in the harbor, a train or something going on, but they got nothing to give it as a source that's causing this thing. Mm. But they hear it. As a matter of fact, I was looking at a YouTube um, uh, incident yesterday, and they were talking about the city, Atlanta, Georgia, I think it was. And this thing was heard for hours on end, uh, a, a, a tremendous noise coming out of the and it was the night, it was the atmosphere, and this woman was taking pictures, but there was nothing to see. Sure. You, or you could take, or you could find with the, the sound that's coming uh, um, throughout the city. And so people are uh, beginning to get antsy, and uh, they're naturally going to ask the government authorities what's going on, and uh, they ain't going to get any satisfaction there. So it's building up to what you're reading here. Yeah. And, uh, Matthew and Luke.